RAF Little Walden is a now disused airbase situated three miles northeast of Saffron Walden in Essex. After its opening in 1944, the base was used by both the Royal Air Force and the United States Army Air Forces right through until the end of the war when it was converted for use as storage for military surplus. After its closure in 1958, the site was then passed over to agriculture and the remaining buildings were either destroyed or used for storage for the nearby farm. The control tower is probably the most iconic remaining feature and was recently converted into a privately owned dwelling. During its short period of operation, there was to be a number of aircraft crashes in Little Walden and the surrounding area, many of which being the result of failed crash landings and some very unfortunate air collisions. Probably the most tragic event happened on the 27th of May 1944, when a Douglas A-20 Havoc piloted by Captain Roger D. Dunbar took off from Little Walden and headed southeast, where it collided mid-air with a P-51 Mustang that was out of a training mission. The Mustang disintegrated mid-air, killing Lieutenant Dickens instantly. The A-20 Havoc crash-landed in a nearby field, where it then ignited into a huge blaze, the airman still trapped inside. Having seen the fire, a local widow and trained nurse named Betty Everett, along with a staff sergeant, raced towards the burning aircraft, where she managed to pull one of the airmen from the wreckage. Upon returning for the second man, however, one of the bombs aboard the aircraft exploded, killing her, her small dog, the staff sergeant and all remaining airmen on board. As a thank you to Betty's heroic actions, the US airmen stationed at Little Walden set up a fund and managed to raise £3,000 to provide an education for her now orphaned four-year-old son. This was just one of many tragic events that plagued the airbase at Little Walden and the surrounding area and with so many similar things happening, is there really any surprise that people believe the area to be haunted? Probably the most frequently sighted ghost here is that of an American World War II airman who is seen walking along the side of the road trying to hitch a lift, presumably to get back to the airbase. Now there's a story that comes from November of 1993 when a lady was actually driving along this road one evening trying to get back to the village of Linton, when she looked in her rearview mirror and saw a man dressed in full United States Air Force uniform. Many people believe this to be the ghost of Captain Schultz, whose P-51 Mustang crash-landed in one of the nearby fields, killing him instantly. After filming here and performing a small investigation back in 2013, I posted our findings online and had a number of people contact me claiming that they, or someone they knew, had also seen the ghostly airman at some point. Many of these sightings seemingly spanning from the 1970s all the way through to the 90s. Now I personally think there is definitely some truth behind a lot of the sightings along this stretch of road. There's just been so many people that have all witnessed the same thing, most notably the United States Airmen walking along uh, the side of the road, which is in itself quite a distinctive uh, uniform. It's not something you're gonna mistake for something else. On top of this, there's also been a lot of people that have driven along here that are unaware of the site's history. They, they didn't know it was an airbase during the Second World War. And for them to also see the same figure um, dressed in that same way, does imply that they are telling the truth about it all. Now, if you believe what a lot of people do, that some ghosts are created when a person has died and they're not aware they're dead, usually resulting from sudden deaths and you can't really get much more sudden than an aircraft crash. Um, could it be that this particular ghost was the result of this? His plane crashed, he didn't know he died and then tried to get back to the airbase and that would explain why he seems to be trying to hitch a lift to get back to the airbase itself. Personally, I don't know what to believe. However, I do know for a fact that there's been more than a fair share of people that have seen something that they can't explain. And who knows, maybe some echoes of war do still resonate along these lonely, empty fields. <laughs>